Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's October 19th and we just got our first frost. A little bit's sitting on the grass if you can see that. So now's really time to make sure you pull out all your warm weather crops. If you got green tomatoes, pull them off. It's time for fried green tomatoes. We're going to get in the garden. I'm going to actually talk about spring planting based on how my garden grew or how your garden grew for this season and you can kind of walk through your garden and figure out some ways to better design it. Before we get there, these are blueberry bushes, raspberries, blackberries. Right now Home Depot is having 50% off bushes, trees, and shrubs. So the fruit canes, blueberry bushes all fall into that. Perennial flowers fall into that if you want to attract bees. All these plants were just five dollars a pot. That is really inexpensive, especially when you can get, you know, a blueberry bush established like that. You can plant these in the fall. They'll do perfectly well. The root systems will establish. The leaves will die back. But come spring, you'll have a nice, well-established blueberry bush or your raspberry canes. I even picked up another tree, an apricot tree. I'm not sure where that's going to go. So here is my summer garden. There are cool weather crops in there. I'll be talking about those in other videos soon. But they did Everything just did really, really well. I'm really excited about all of that. Right now, green beans, I'm letting dry. All of my beans I'm letting dry. You just let them dry on the vine, and when they're completely crunchy and you can break it open, you'll have beans you can use for soups, you can store. So, planning for spring at the end of fall. When you look in here, you can see lots of tall plants mixed into the center of the garden and in fact let's here's an example that's an okra it's probably 12 feet tall pretty amazing you want to make sure you plant your tall plants in a position that they don't cast shade onto your other plants and I was excited to get this built for the first year and was dropping in stuff with a plan but not a perfect plan so what I mean by that so my sun comes up over there, you can see it right now, really bright right there, and it tracks behind those trees, and then about noontime it comes up over there, and it works its way all the way around. So I get a lot of sunlight. So I'm planning for when the sun hits about there, that everything in the back are the smaller plants over there, and everything coming this way are going to be the taller plants so that the shadows fall outside the garden. So again, the half a garden from here where the noon sun comes up, the smaller plants, the taller plants. Over this way, because it's morning sun, I could continue that plan, put all the tall plants over here so the shadow comes towards me. Or because the sun's really going to move over to here, and out this way, coming in here, you could still put taller plants back there. So, and that's a little bit of kind of a different perspective. People don't always think about that. It's not exactly where the sun is every moment. It's where it is for most of the day. So from like 11 to 6 o'clock, it's going to be over here. So I want to make sure the shadows are coming over here. This part of my garden I can kind of play with and do what I want. I'll talk about that as we walk in there. The leafy greens are doing well. Remember they can take a frost, which they did, and they're going to bounce back perfectly. This is uh, mustard green, oak lettuce, spinach, the beets I'm growing just for the greens. But even in a small container, I have beets forming. That's pretty cool. I don't know what round of radishes I have in there, but we're probably at number three or four. Hopefully they make it. Oak leek. Oh, yeah, oak leaf lettuce. You can grow just like this. Any loose leaf lettuce, really. Put it in a tray. You can keep it filled with water and nutrients, and you can get nice leaves this way. Cut them for microgreens or smaller greens, or you could even let them get larger. These are also a great way to grow transplants. Carrots, spinach, arugula, all doing well in shallow containers. These are all going to get harvested today, actually, for a salad. So I'm having people come over today, and here's the morning side of the garden where the sun is up here from like 9, 10, 11, moving over that way. I grew so much food and I've been giving it away that I need to figure out a better way to get rid of it, give it to friends and, and all that. 
So once a month now, on a Saturday, I'm going to kind of have a harvest help and happy hour where people can come over, harvest vegetables, help out in the garden a little bit, and then, you know, we'll have some wine or beer, whatever people are interested in. All of this is going to get transformed today. Every warm weather crop is going to be pulled out. I'm going to be preparing the beds for their winter sleep for next spring. I'll be doing videos on that. But let's just talk about the planning. So, fruit garden over here, sunlight comes around this way. I want to make sure I don't have anything tall here that's going to cast sun on there. So, right in this space will be my lower growing plants like the tomatoes or anything else. Coming out this way, really up to that first trellis over there made out of closet shelving will be tall plants. I'm going to have a large cattle panel tunnel right through there where all that trellising is. That's going to get moved and that will get moved to that fence down there where it can be taller and out of the way. But you want to be able to kind of look at when, again, 11 o'clock noon sun coming all the way around this way your garden's getting full sun. You're not having any shadows coming in or shadows having, like you want to put all your tall plants way back there because they're going to cast shadows this way. So plan a little bit. Go out and look around now, see what your sun does. So in this space, okra, that shouldn't have been planted here. It should have been over to the side or down there on the right side. But I just tucked it in and I'm letting this all dry out, seed pod wise. I don't think there's any in here that are dry. Um, but this is how I collect seeds and sell them at my seed shop. I don't, let's see how I can get through here. Well, right in here, I had to do some uh, trellising on the fly. And you could see, I mean, well, this was perfectly straight. And it sat up just like this. It was pretty cool until the okra just took it out. We had a big windstorm the last two days. So I had to set up some trellises in here that I normally wouldn't put there because I couldn't get the cattle panel. But I'm going to have cattle panel here and here and maybe in the next one and it's going to be a tunnel. So one of my strategies I'll be thinking about is what will go growing on the left side of the tunnel, what's going to be right in here because there's going to be some shadows. But again, I'm setting my tunnel up so that a majority of the sun comes right through here. So the shadows are going to drop back this way and the rest of the crops will get enough sun. All the tomatoes did really well. I mean you can see the tomato hedge is out of control. Even these determinate tomatoes came back. They're not going to make it. I mean they're beautiful but we already had a light frost today. It doesn't look like it bothered them but it's going to come. So these are all going to get yanked out. But the other strategy is, did I grow too much food? And yes, I grew too much. I wanted to see what I could do. So this is probably going to be something else. This will probably be low growing squash, zucchini, sticking with my strategy that taller plants will be over there. It'll stay fully open for low plants coming all the way through here and then taller plants will go right in here. Before I had some of the zucchini and squash over there and it, it just it just didn't make sense. So I'm already replanting this whole space. This is all going to be low growing crops. Tall crops will be up over here and the shadows won't bother them. And I don't need this many tomatoes. I mean, I'd love to say that everything had logic in the planting, but I just love watching stuff grow. All of this is going to get pulled out, like I said. This was a complete success, but look at this hedge. I couldn't build them any higher. I couldn't build the cage any higher while I was letting them grow. So I'm going to have to design something. And instead of putting, I don't know what I had in there, 12 different cherries, I'm going to cut it down to really three or four of my favorite kind. So as we're coming into this space, right at the end of that trellis over there, everything in this area should be flat or low growing plants. These are the cool weather crops. There should be no reason that I put okra in here to cast shadows. The bean trellises shouldn't be there. 
Sunflower shouldn't be there. They either get to get pushed back against that fence or back against this fence. You want this nice and open. Also, the reason you want to do that is you want a nice circulation of air. If I have these mounds all over the place, it kind of sometimes stagnates the air. Looks cool, but you want that wind blowing through, drying off your leaves, helping keep diseases away from your plants. Eggplants, peppers, they all look great there, but if I had my acorn squash still growing, my butternut squash still growing, beans growing on these trellises, when actually when that was happening they were casting shadows on here and the eggplant weren't thriving like they were supposed to so again that's going to get moved over but just a couple things to really think about I know it's a lot of talking but your design of your garden is really important to maximize the Sun airflow and just pay attention to the size of your plants here are some of the dried pods that I'm talking about I may even go and collect all these and then put them along the edge of my wooded area and grow okra wild that way. That's a lot of growth to maintain and manage to prevent diseases and stuff. So if you had problems with diseases, think about how much did you grow? Did you need it all? I mean, perfect example in here, I mean, I love the growth, but it's too much, is if I just took out the center section, that would let more air circulation in, that would let sun to the other side. Something to think about. Let me go over to the compost because just about everything in here that you see will be removed today. I mean look at the tomatoes here and this might be something too that that I think is kind of cool I didn't think about. I can grow my tomatoes just along the fence line. They did really well, did well on the other side too. So this is something I picked up off of Amazon. It's really for a dog cage but it's perfect for just dumping in weeds and plants that I'm taking out. This is going to dry in here, turn brown. This is slope composting it's not really called cold composting but this may take six eight months of just breaking down normally if you set up a couple barrels these spin just water in there that's pretty gross I forgot to put the lid on I'll drain that out if you mix in you know half greens like say grass clippings half leaves I'll do a video on more details on that which are your browns or your carbons and you spin this regularly, it's called hot composting. And this can break down anywhere in six to eight weeks and you have compost ready. We'll talk about that. But with all this masses, mass amounts of, of um, greens, I'm going to build my compost station here. It's going to be probably a, maybe a four foot by four foot section, maybe a little bit bigger here, of just dropping the greens. I'll have another one of browns like leaves, uh, straw right here actually on the right side and then I'll have one in the middle where I'm taking browns and greens nitrogen carbon and layering it here turning it and it's somewhere between cold composting on the far side and the barrels and that will break down quickly like over three or four months instead of taking six or eight months but this is going to be my composting space and I hope to eventually be able to make enough compost that I don't need to use any fertilizer in the garden but don't rush out and try to do everything at once I couldn't get to the composting yet just design your garden it's, I can't stress it enough with a way that makes sense so when the Sun is at its say 10 o'clock to, to 5 or 6 o'clock position the shadows are going the right way I hope this gives you some ideas for planning I know it's a lot of talking but some things you know I think deserve more conversation. This is all of my asparagus. And take notes. If you haven't taken pictures of your garden, take pictures now. Take notes. Write down at this moment what plants did really well, what plants weren't problems with diseases. And if I were going to give you one more tip, it doesn't matter what product you use for spraying your plants, for managing uh, molds, fungus, diseases. Just stick to a routine and you'll find that you'll be really successful. But part of the reason why I had great growth this year is I followed my own advice and I sprayed, followed my routine every 10 to 14 days or however I set, I set it up. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at therestedgarden.com and please subscribe. Future videos will show this all taken down. We'll be getting the beds ready for fall, for winter, and you know, doing more planning for 2020. Thanks for watching.